autumn's coming. Coming up. Make your own gaskets. DIY presentation boxes. And more stickers. Well, we're just moving into October and it's getting to that time of year here in the UK where the nights are drawing in and the temperature is getting a little cooler. I think it's time to bring the workshop heater out of storage in readiness. In the last edition, Professor Pete asked if I could show the method I used for making silicone gaskets. I know it's not woodworking, but as I've had a few other inquiries about this, I thought I would document the process. Because this is a small circle and I don't have a circle cutting jig for my trim router, I rig up a quick and dirty Heath Robinson affair. I'm using a 2mm thick offcut of MDF. prop up the router and manually push the bit through to give me a zero clearance plate. You'll see why later. The inside diameter of the gasket will be 120mm, so I mark 60mm from the inner edge of the cutter. The zero clearance plate keeps all the debris in the groove, saving it from being thrown around in the workshop. Not a good idea if you're using it for any length of time, as you could overheat the cutter. But for these 30 seconds or so, it's fine. And it saves me getting the duster out later on. I cut down to the depth I want in just a couple of passes. MDF is very absorbent, so I cover the groove and the surface area with two good lashings of acrylic varnish to seal it, with a quick rub down after each coat. When fully dry, I coat the groove with some paste wax. Last time I made gaskets, I used Vaseline, but I've used all that up on... Um, on something else. You could use mould release for silicone if you want, but um, like me, you probably don't have any lying around. The gasket is not going to be used in an extreme or adverse environment, so I would think any decent silicone would be fine for this. I squeeze a thin bead first and squidge it in to make sure I have no air pockets. Then I fill up the groove. A plastic loyalty card is a great tool to have in your workshop. It comes in handy in lots of situations. Once I'm nearly there, I spray on some tap water and work it to a smooth finish. Stephen! 
Come on. It's past your bedtime. All right. Have you seen my loyalty card? Oops. Right, it's been about 36 hours. I hope that's long enough. Um, but it's quite firm now, feels quite squidgy. And also, it's pulling away nicely from the edge. So I think we should be okay with this. So let's get it out of there and see what uh, what we've got. Yep, there we go. Oh, oh nice. Oh, it's oh dear, still a bit sticky on the bottom, but um, no, that's not bad. Yeah, it's um, not quite cured right in the base, but um, but that'll do for me. That's that's okay for what I want. I was just a bit too eager getting it out. Another day's cooking, and that will be fine. But. Um, but that'll do for me. Anyway, it shows you the principle that I use for making my gaskets anyway. That's the main thing. You just have to be a bit more patient than me. As for the mould, this is good for several more gaskets at least. But if you're done with it, you could always put it on Etsy and sell it as modern art. Now we know that really snazzy presentation boxes for the pens you make and sell are worth the expense. But for your everyday pens, simple cardboard presentation boxes can run at around 80 to 90 pence each here in the UK, and that's if you're buying in quantity. But there is an alternative that's much cheaper and still presents your budget range of pens in a professional light, and that is to make your own. It's not difficult, and once you're familiar with the process, you can turn these out during the adverts in your favourite TV programme. It utilises the principles of origami, and these boxes are quite robust considering they're only made from everyday paper. Also, you don't need to mess about with glue or tape or staples, you just need two pieces of paper for each box. After a little bit of tweaking to get the dimensions suitable for your average pen, I put together a little how-to tutorial which I think may be popular amongst all you pen makers. I'm starting off with two A4 sheets of paper. This is just normal everyday paper there's nothing special about it it's pale grey because it's easier to see pale grey than bright white when i'm folding it for the video but apart from that it's just ordinary everyday paper you can also use uh, letter size paper in fact that will give you just a slightly larger box but that's fine the first thing to do is to cut these square and the easiest way to do that really is to push it up against a straight edge and lay another A4 sheet across the top of it the opposite direction and then whatever's sticking out gets cut off. Well, I'm just cutting a couple of sheets here for this demonstration but you can cut a whole stack of it ready. So I've got two squares. Now the lid has to be bigger than the bottom to fit over the top and there is a, an origami technique to be able to make them bigger but that involves a lot more folding and it does get a little messy. So we're going to cheat and we're going to cut off about three eighths of an inch or about eight millimetres. I'm just using my cutting mat as a guide here but I'll not insult your intelligence. I mean, you're all woodworkers or wood turners or makers or crafters. I'm sure you can figure out a way of cutting off a strip of paper to make it square. And 
and there we go. So again, you can cut a lot of these up ready, so you can have them up in pairs. And I'm going to start with the lid. So I've got my A4 that I've cut square, and I need to find the middle. Now usually, you fold the paper diagonally in both directions. And where the crisscross is, that is the middle. But if we do that, we're going to have creases on the box that we don't want. So I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to mark the centre by putting a crisscross from diagonal to diagonal. Now I'm using a, a bold pen here just so that you can see. You only really need to use a light pencil but for the sake of the video this dark pen makes it easy to see. The only measurement we need to do is from the middle outwards 35 millimeters on two opposite sides. Why 35 millimeters? Well, just trust me on this. So I'll switch my ruler into millimeter mode and I'll put 35 in the center and I'll put a mark at zero and at 70. There we go. Right, so let's start folding. The first thing to do is fold these points onto the mark that you just made. Here and on the opposite side here. And if you can get your creases really sharp, that does help. So I'm going to use a technical device called a stick and press it down. Now we fold these sides into the middle and just take your time, line it up and then press it flat. Same to the opposite side, into the middle. Try and get them to just meet each other. Don't, don't let them overlap. And try and avoid a gap if you can. So that's what it should look like. We now take these points and fold them in so they land here, just where these two corners meet. Now, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect there. What matters is two nice corners here and here. So if you need to give it a little bit of a tweak, that's fine. Because it doesn't matter if that point isn't perfect. What matters are the corners. And it's the same on the other side. Now we've folded them in, we fold this edge in and this edge will land on top of this intersection here. Once you get it in place, just check that you're nice and straight down that edge. That will make sure that your box is square. And of course, same at the other end. Just going to roll that a little bit. There we go. And we'll get that one in. Open them out. And then fold the long sides into the middle. Again, just check you're okay at the ends. That you're not splayed out. Press it home. And of course, same to the other side. Just get them to meet in the middle and then give it all some stick. And we're nearly there. What will help us fold the box into shape is putting a diagonal crease 
from this crisscross here to the corner. And that's easy to do because we can bend the paper backwards. Where there's only one layer in the middle, that's the weakest point. So we can just push it back and just pinch a little crease in. It doesn't have to be a fantastic crease. This will just help us fold the box into shape. If I open these up, we're ready. So we stand up the two long sides and then those diagonal creases that we've just put in, we give them a push. This side will lift and then the rest of the paper folds inside and tucks down. And then it's the same at the other end. These two diagonals push in, the paper lifts, and we fold it right inside. And if we whiz around with the stick, we can get all the creases on the lip of the box nice and flat. Gives it strength, straightens everything up. And there we go. The bottom is exactly the same as the top, but because it's made from paper a little bit smaller, it just fits inside. So once the top and the bottom go together, it's quite a, a solid construction. And with this just being normal paper, you can run it through your printer and print anything you like on the paper. So there we go. A simple box just to present your pens in. Much nicer than throwing it in a paper bag when somebody buys it on your stall. Just adds that little bit of professionalism. Using a simple calculation, there's also a way to produce square boxes of any size and height ratio that you need. So if enough people are interested, I'll put together a video tutorial for that one as well. So do let me know if that's of interest. I've still got some stickers left if anybody wants one, so just uh, email me or message me. The details are in the description and I'll get one out to you. I've also had a few more drop through my letterbox, so let's have a look and see what's come in this month. Hey, hey all side here. here! First to arrive was from Sai's Corner. Sai is based in Oregon and loves intarsia work. She posts regularly and has some great project ideas. I also received a sticker from Al's Hack Shack. Don't fret if you've never heard of him, he's only had a channel for a couple of months. I thought I had a daft sense of humour, but Al's just takes the biscuit. After a recent long distance collaboration with Pam Harris, she sent me one of hers from Highland Boxes. Pam is into rings, pens, bandsaw boxes and anything else that takes a fancy. Finally, a sticker from Chris at Paw Print Designs, another maker new to YouTube. Chris has just started his long hard fall down the rabbit hole of wood turning. And like a lot of others, I suspect his wallet is going to suffer a severe cachectomy. A few weeks ago, Chris sent me some images of his camera rig. He built this after watching my build video. He used 18mm MDF, which makes it less prone to camera wobble when starting to film. So, what's been happening? Well, in an effort to make my videos more accessible, they all now have the option of subtitles. The auto-generated captions by YouTube have got better, but they still leave a lot to be desired. 
The subtitles are available through the captions option on each video. The Spellcaster 6 Wand build went live a few days ago. It's my entry into the Small Workshop YouTube Makers Challenge and it's getting some fantastic feedback. Do check that one out if you've not done so already and do have a look at some of the other entries as well. It's fascinating to see how each maker interprets the challenge. The Christmas special has been storyboarded and I'm building the props for it now. I can't show you because that'll give the game away. There is a, a spooky story coming up on the 20th of October. She pulled the covers over her head and shrank down into the bed as tight as tight as she could, hoping to disappear so the thing would not see her. Guaranteed to scare the pants off the little ones ready for Halloween. And on the 30th or 31st of October, I'm not exactly sure, there will be a simple Halloween build as well. That's about it for this vlog. Thanks for joining me here. If you have any questions, do get in touch. Feel free to leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, let me know if there's anything I could improve on. I really do appreciate all the comments and I do try and reply to them, but I do get inundated sometimes, so please be patient. If you enjoy the videos, do subscribe and share, comment and share, like and share, dislike and share. So, until the next time, jobs are good in.